Hi everyone, today I'm going to give you all of my BMAT section one preparation tips. It's 60 minutes, 32 questions, and the first hurdle between you and a great BMAT score. Keep listening to find out what kind of questions there are and my top tips to help you prepare. Hi everyone, my name's Jess from Medic Mind and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Birmingham. Section one is described officially as a test of the generic skills often required for undergraduate study. By this, they mean that section one is more of a test of your abstract reasoning skills compared to section two, which is more of a test of your pre-learned scientific knowledge. The timing of section one is that you have 60 minutes to complete 32 questions. This can seem like a massive relief compared to those 15 second questions from the UCAT. And it means that you can spend a lot more time making sure that you've got as many questions as possible right. So let's talk about the types of question. The BMAT has changed slightly for 2020 with the number of questions in section one being reduced from 35 to 32. And all of the questions on data analysis, which is interpreting statistics and graphs have been removed. What's left are questions that fall into one of two categories, either problem solving or critical thinking. There'll be 16 questions of each type and they're arranged in rough order of difficulty. Every one of the questions is multiple choice, but there are no calculators allowed. Problem solving questions will involve handling numerical information and they come in one of three forms. This will be either relevant section where you're given a large amount of information and you need to filter through to find the relevant bit of information. Finding procedures where you're usually given a smaller amount of information and you need to determine which mathematical operation is the correct one to use or identifying similarity, where you'll have to compare information presented in two different ways, usually either graphs, tables, or charts. Critical thinking questions will give you a passage of text and you'll need to identify the relevant parts of the argument. There are seven different types of critical thinking question and I'll go through them now. The first type of question is identifying the main conclusion. This means you need to identify the statement that sums up the essence of the argument while not getting distracted by statements that may have been made but weren't the main point or statements that weren't made at all. The second type is drawing a conclusion. This means you need to identify the statement that can be inferred from the text, although it might not have been explicitly said. The third type of question is identifying the assumption. This means you need to identify which assumptions have been made to allow the conclusion to be true, even though they weren't stated in the text. The fourth type of question is called assessing the impact of additional evidence. This means you need to identify statements that could either strengthen or weaken the argument. The fifth type of question is called detecting reasoning errors. This means you need to identify flaws in the text. For example, the conclusion might not follow on from the points that have been made or an incorrect assumption has been made. The sixth type of question is called matching arguments. This means you need to identify cases in which the same logical processes have been followed in both the text and the correct answer option, even though they might be talking about different things. And finally, applying principles. This means you need to identify the underlying principle or opinion present in the text and choose an answer option that's consistent with this opinion. When explained out like that, it can all seem quite technical and difficult to understand. But that's why my number one tip to prepare for section one is to look at practice questions. You probably do quite a lot of these things when you chat or argue with friends, do your schoolwork or read news articles. And you'll probably realize this when you start going through past papers. Because the specification has only changed for this year, unfortunately there aren't any past papers that will be exactly the same as the exam that you'll take, but all you need to do is ignore the data analysis questions and you can do the rest. I'll tell you a bit about how this section is marked and then I'll give you my tips to help you prepare. For section one of the BMAT, you're given one mark for each correct answer you get and there's no negative marking. Your total score for the section is then standardized to a score between 1.0 and 9.0, with 9.0 being the highest. 5.0 is usually the median score and only about 10% of people tend to get 6.0. Preparation is probably the most important for section one of the BMAT. As an aspiring medic, you'll probably be really familiar with all the sciences and maths and how to apply them. However, thinking in a slightly more abstract way might be a bit more unfamiliar to you. If you'd like some extra help, Medic Minds BMAT tutors can always go through some questions with you in a bit more depth. My first tip would be to learn the basics of critical thinking, particularly in passages of text. 
every single one will have conclusions made, supporting evidence and assumptions that they've made. You might have studied critical thinking at school, which will have given you a head start on all of this, but if not, there are lots of guides and help out there online, because critical thinking isn't just used in the BMAT. It's great practice for section one, and it will also make you a lot better at critically appraising and evaluating passages of text. My second tip is to have a plan. I've outlined all the different types of questions that could come up, so nothing should be too much of a surprise. Decide when you approach a question whether you'd prefer to read the question in the text first or maybe have a look at the answers so you know what you're looking for in the text. I personally tend to read answer options before I go to read the rest of the question so that I have an idea of what I'm looking for and I ignore irrelevant parts, but be careful that this might cloud your judgement and you can end up seeing answers that aren't actually there. Work out what works for you and be sure to use this strategy every time. As well as planning how you answer questions, plan how you're going to manage your time throughout this entire section. Because you have a fair bit of time for each question, it's easy to get lost in one question and end up having to rush the rest of the section. What I normally do for all of my exams is have an idea of how many questions I want to have completed when half of the time has passed. That's so I know what I'm aiming for and I don't have to check my watch constantly, but it also means I've got some leeway if I spend slightly more time on one question and slightly less on another. Make sure you also leave time for checking your answers at the end of the section too. Tip number three is to practice skim reading and your ability to distill information. It might not seem like it at first, but these are skills that you can learn and you will get better at it. It's also something you'll have to do quite a lot once you start medical school, when people will have expected you to read 20 page journal articles and you need to separate out the most important findings from the rest of the waffle. Practice skim reading and looking for key words and phrases that relate back to the question. In the stress of an exam situation, it can be easy to focus on unnecessary parts of the text, so practicing this beforehand is key. Tip number four makes it sound like a bit like we're in primary school again, but it's to learn your times tables. You don't get a calculator in the exam, so the last thing you want to be doing is stuck trying to add up six lots of seven just so you can answer one question. Also, make sure you can convert between fractions and decimals as this will really speed up your ability to answer questions. Keep listening and I'll give you my final bonus tip as well. Tip number five is to move straight on once you've answered a question. As I said earlier, you should have planned out your time so that you have time to check your answers at the end. If you end up lingering on a question you've just answered, you'll probably be biased towards the answer you just chose, so you'll just see it as being right, even if it isn't. Take the time to look at your questions again at the end with fresh eyes, where you'll be far more likely to spot any mistakes. My final tip is to set aside a lot of extra time to practice for this section. You'll probably need more than you think. You'll probably be able to whiz through section two with all of your science and mathematical knowledge, whereas section one is something quite different to anything you might have done before. But that's an opportunity to do something different as well. Make sure to do as many BMAP section one questions as you can on the official BMAP website. And if you check out Medic Minds website, we have specially made mock questions and papers too. Being able to read and distill large amounts of information, whether that's a massive lecture, a scientific paper, or just a really long email from uni admin, will be a skill you can never have too much of, and it will be useful to you way after you finish your BMAT section one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.